how did you become uh, familiar with handball? What does the meaning? Did there have been any other sports you have been tried or how was the beginning of your career? Well, yeah, it, it all started uh, back in Norway, of course. My mom, she was uh, playing handball uh, and that's basically how I also got introduced to the sport. Um, she was still playing after after I was born and I just loved to, to be in the arena. I was, I was in the arena. Uh, a lot, and uh, I think that the love for the sport uh, it came uh, it came that way. This was the meaning that uh, these nice memories from the childhood, or in the arenas and the trainings. I suppose you have been there. That you and also your sister uh, became a player. Yeah, for sure. I think that has a lot to say. It's something about that when when you are in an environment where where yeah, in my case, handball was was such a big part. Then uh, then of course it's something that you that you very often continue to also find some liking in and that I sure did. Um, it was, uh, your name is one of the best playmaker ever, or you are, your name is mentioned around the best playmakers ever, but did you play it always like a playmaker or some other position you started? I started as a left back actually, uh, yeah, back in the days when I was uh, very young. So uh, in this team, then uh, then I was mostly the the left back. Uh, of course, when when some of the other girls start to to grow a little more, then it it felt quite natural that I was uh, put into the middle as well and yeah, have more this type of playmaker role. But uh, but yes, that's uh, I started on on the side. And uh, of course, you are much more better with, with a playmaker position right now, so it's more feel comfortable for you. Yeah, 100%. Now it's my position and, uh, and I don't know, I always loved uh, this, this whole playmaker role. One thing is to, to yeah, shoot and score and that can be great, of course, but I always loved this overview of the game and that, that you get the best from, from the playmaker position. Maybe this made you a bit more dedicated and may, maybe more focused about achieving something great. Yeah, maybe. But I also think that, at least for me, a lot of this type of motivation, it comes a lot from, from myself. Like I, I enjoy a lot to, to kind of have goals and to work for something. And, and I'm very hard on myself, which sometimes has been, I think it, it has made me who I am in the best ways. And it's also been maybe the things that have been the most difficult for me. So it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's kind of a two-way thing, but I'm, but I have no doubt that that also made me good. After every game here in Jur or in the Norwegian national team or wherever you play, it's easy to say that you are an idol for a lot of students, a lot of young uh, girls who want to play handball. But who was your idol? Who was your your mother, maybe, or someone else? And I think that it, it all started with my with my mom in that way. And that's for sure. Then along the road, of course, you always see some players that you that you put. A little extra highly. Um, Bojana Popovic was one of those that I saw quite early that I thought was a very com complete player. Of course, the queen of, of the club I'm uh, sitting right now, Gjør, Anita Görvitz. She was also one of those that I looked at and yeah, could admire in that way. And um, so it was somehow a mix of finding inspiration and admire things, but also find my own way, which was always very important for me also because I was um, similar in some ways but also very different in, in other ways you leave your dreams let's say because uh, you like handball and you are a professional handball player and we can say that in the last um, 15 maybe 20 years handball has been your life how difficult or how good is it oh no but it's of course an, an amazing everyday life no doubt about that to be able to have your your hobby as as your job that's it's a, it's such a privilege but also like for every single step you take and for for every single new thing you manage to achieve, uh, there also comes pressure. And, and that's something I felt a lot on, on my body as well. And OK, this pressure is there, but it's still that you also put this bar even higher and higher for yourself. And like I said already, I can be quite rough on myself and quite hard towards myself. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing everyday life. Uh, I feel extremely privileged in that way. Uh, but of course also it's, um, it, it also has, has its downsides. And yeah, to always live away from, in my case, for, from family, friends, uh, these things, that, that's also something that counts into the big picture. The interview, what we are shooting right now, is also special here in Jur. This is the old hall, the venue, the Magwashi Mihai Sport mm -hmm. Hall. And uh, this is your, uh, let's say, the most pl the place where you visit most in Europe, because the trainings for the first team is always happening here, and the matches are played in the new Audi Arena. 
does it came often to your mind that your international career, the first big achievement, has just it happened only here? It's in 2009 that we are speaking about Junior Euro, when Norway, with you and with a lot of other fantastic players, plays a final here in this hall with Hungary, mm. and you won a gold medal. Mm. Yeah, for me it, it was uh, it was really here it all begun, like on the big stage. Uh, I think that for sure now when I have my everyday life here, it's easy to kind of forget it. And right now it is my, my training arena somehow. But uh, without any doubt, there's been, there have been many times when I also thought like, this is the whole, you know, this, is, this means a lot to me actually. And, uh, and with the few of the girls that I played with there in 2009, uh, Celia, for example, she's, uh, she's here now as well, uh, Vicky too. So that's also quite special, I must say. And, and we said it quite early that, if we could ever play here, uh, that would be it. And, uh, and we managed, we were lucky enough, good enough, a good mix of both. And uh, it kind of feels like, uh, feels like the, um, the circle is, is closed <laughs> in that way. What do you remember from that match? I have been here on mm -hmm. the final. I was then the speaker for the game. And it was, uh, I remember that it was not possible to, to find any tickets. It was full house. Mm -hmm. It was amazing atmosphere. And of course, uh, as it is in Hungary, and the Hungarian national team was here not for you, but of course you managed to win. How do you remember for that final? Oof, yeah, I, I really think that that was, that was the first time all of us Norwegian girls uh, could really feel what this type of, of humble atmosphere was all about. Of course, we had played uh, in front of, of uh, some fullest uh, arenas in Norway as well, but a full arena in Norway, it's something about like, no offense, but it's nothing like a full arena in Hungary. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy to us and in the best way. I think that even though we knew that 99% uh, of this hall were against us, it still kind of lifted us a little and it, it, felt, it felt incredible. And it was honestly a very, yeah, it, it, gave, it gave some kind of taste of this, uh, of this um, humble culture that you have in, here in Hungary that was amazing to be honest now i just kindly ask you to remember for that saturday afternoon in 2017 mm -hmm. in the spring when stine you came to Gjör and in a half time of a champions league game you have been introduced to the spectators of the club because a big ovation what was inside you at that moment <sighs> overwhelming of course um, i felt that it was very right to take this next step at this point i really wanted to play at the highest level uh, in champions league uh, Gjör had always been my dream club so of course to get the chance from this exact club uh, it felt a little like uh, yeah like a fairy tale at that moment uh, I was really nervous <laughs> entering the court, uh, but of course it felt very good and I felt very welcomed here for, from, the, from the very start. For us at that time it was quite strange that everyone knows you from the Norwegian national team, but even Champions League you never played before. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a bit, uh, you were, wasn't a bit nervous because of this? That, uh, so you were not uh, thinking about that, did you make a good steps in your career so you didn't miss nothing? I actually never thought about it that way. Um, I was, I've been, yeah, Norway, of course, as a national team has always had the top quality. So I always felt that I already managed to, to try myself on this level for multiple years. Uh, I played many finals already, I, uh, yeah, for many years in a row. And with that, I kind of just felt that it was the right and the good next uh, next step for uh, step for me. So of course, like when I was going to play the first game, I, I felt that, <laughs> believe me. But uh, but yeah, I never had this type of doubt that that it would be too much. I I I thought that it would be yeah right. The doubt is a good word because I would like to just uh, ask about it. This word that. Uh, there was no doubt in you that Dior is your next place because I suppose at that time when you choose Dior you had multiple options. Almost everyone would like you to transfer into their team. So how was this uh, opponent when, when Dior was fighting for you? It was a difficult decision for you? Actually felt very easy <laughs> at that point. It, um, you didn't know this, you know, yeah, because <laughs> of course. Had a bit difficult. <laughs> yes. yes, no, but at this moment for me when, when that offer came uh, there were also some Norwegian players here, so I also knew that I had some kind of security, that I knew a few people. Uh, then, uh, it, yeah, it was actually quite easy. It's a difficult question. We are not closing nothing now, but of course I cannot miss the question. 
that what are the most remembering moments from your career if i want to ask you you have some time to think mm -hmm. from your girl career right mm -hmm. now from the club of girl what do you think what are the most remembered maybe champion league victory or, or what what is that i think that these big titles it always comes up right away so winning champions league for the first time winning it the year after that was it was incredible uh, so for sure those are the things that are are like hanging the highest but i also have a few other you know games that were close that we won uh, just by a little that we came back or you know there, there are a lot of these moments um, i also think that just to play in this arena in those most important games um, that is also something that i will take with me for the rest of my life um, so so yeah i have i have many more moments that kind of stand out to me uh, but of course, winning these huge titles, that's something. The first Champions League victory is something extra for you? Yeah, somehow it is. It is something about this first time you managed to, to win something. And especially when I also uh, played quite a lot and were a big part of the team. So, so yes. <laughs> and this is uh, what you build also stone by stone in the past, yep. in the seventh season that you are spending here. One more guess I want you to make. It's a bit easier mm -hmm. because it has been a very nice anniversary, not so much later. But how many goals do you think you have been scored? Yeah, I heard that it was over 1,000. That's uh, yes. so that I know. Um, it's not so long ago, so I didn't score that many since that time. So yeah, right on, uh, right, right over a thousand then. Yes, one thousand and sixty <laughs> currently until the f uh, first days of January until Sevehof mm -hmm. game we can say, and I can say to you that you are the sixth uh, on the list and you can overtake soon uh, a national team player from Norway, Heidi Ooh. Lucke, because oh, it's only thirty-two <laughs> goals, <laughs> but she's in front of you. But of course, if you want the numbers, because I collected all the numbers from your Hungarian Cup Champions League games. I'm interested. I'm, I'm show, uh, sharing with you. So, but it's a it's huge numbers. Of course, I do not want to bore you with this. <laughs> but I mean, you are also in a very very nice place on the history of the club in the number of the matches in the scored uh, goals. Unfortunately, Anita Gurbic, you cannot reach because she is almost. 4, you know 000. what? That's the right <laughs> thing. She should always be on the top. That's that's like that's so fine. <laughs> this is clear. She mm. is she is dear and she is yes, the she legend is. of the club. Of course, it's not a big secret. We can speak honestly about it right now that after Anita Gurbic. Uh, retired it has been a wish from Gür uh, also to promote you as a as a captain of the team but somehow at the end you just you were not the captain it became Anna Mette Hansen and then you were a part of the captain's team this was um, three players why uh, you didn't want it to be the captain of the team maybe it was too much both or what was the reason there were actually m more things that that kind of went into that thought process and and decision for me, uh, first of all, to to even get this suggested again, that actually that made me so happy. And in that way, I also didn't want to to disappoint anyone. At the same time, when this question came, at that point, I wasn't completely sure how my career would look for the next years. Uh, I went through a lot of things, thinking like about when it comes to family. Like there were many questions to me. Um, that I was a little unsure about. I, I also had that responsibility for so many years with national team. I know myself and I know that I take it very seriously and that I take it with, sometimes I, like, I overdo it a little. I, I put more maybe thoughts and, and effort into it than what is really necessary. Uh, and with that, I just thought that I think that Gjør will have a better version of me, a better playing Stine, uh, with me being in the captain's team, but not necessarily kind of being the one who, yeah, out would be the face as the captain. Um, I actually don't think that my role is very different within the team. Uh, I, and that I also said right away that I would like to still be the same type of person for this team and to be a leader and to, to go in front and to take responsibility. So I will, I will never back down on these things. But it was more about what was healthy for, for myself in the total picture, also not really being sure about the next years of, of my own career. So it was actually to, to be the best version of myself that I could be also for this club. It seems to be, and of course from outside, that you are a true leader in the court, 
that's why you are a national team uh, and the captain and also it's clear that even that you are not the captain but you are the leader of the team is it also in the private life so <laughs> when it's uh, free times tina is also deciding <laughs> everything or how it goes uh, or you um, feel it better if someone else <laughs> is doing this no but i i've always been i've always been very thorough and i i am a little of a perfectionist so I, I like to be in control, <laughs> no doubt about that. I, I for sure still respect that others also take responsibility and, and that I, I'll gladly share it. So it's not like that. It's not like I want to be bossy or anything, but I like to be in control <laughs> and that I somehow yeah, get a little more with these type of roles. So when it's a holiday, then you decide where you go <laughs> yeah, and what I you will check? hundred <laughs> percent. For sure I do. <laughs> about the nice things and the nice moment of course and everybody identify you like like a, a smiling wonder because of course you are a, not just amazing person an amazing athlete and of course all the opponents are respecting you but of course we have to admit that there have been some difficult moments as it's always been in the life it has been really difficult moments we can manage just to say um, a lost world championship final you had also lost uh, champions league final you have been also a part of this one of course, the Olympic dream, which is, uh, of course, after a many Euro and World Championship to win and you didn't win it. Or if we don't go so much fa back and it was difficult for me to see uh, you after a match, your game, uh, when it was in the last seconds, a, a, a mistake, which happens every day and you were crying mm -hmm. a lot. It's difficult mm -hmm. for me to see you are crying. But what were your, your difficult moments, what you can identify as it was? Mm, yeah, but you, of course, mentioned a lot of these situations that that are the hardest one as an athlete. I think like having a little more perspective, seeing here now, not filled with all these emotions. I also think that is exactly how sport should be. Um, sport would never be interesting if it weren't a good level, you know, and if it were the same ones always winning with, with a bunch of goals. It's supposed to be even at the top and it's supposed to be difficult. And I also think that it, that is what makes it even better when you manage and when you actually win those type of things. Um, in the moment, <laughs> no doubt, then suddenly it feels, then it feels like it's everything as well. You know, like sport, it's, it's, it's nothing, but it's everything all at the same time. And I think that's also why we, why we all love it so much, that it is like the, you feel at the bottom when you, when you lose and when you're not satisfied with, with yourself and when you don't manage what you kind of work for every single day. I, I live here for, for a reason. I, I live away from my friends, from my family, my boyfriend to achieve some goals and like to do this with the, the group that I have here and with the fans that we have in the arena, with the club. So when you then don't manage, it, it feels like everything. Um, and I, like I said, I think that's, that's somehow the beauty of sport. It is brutal when it is brutal, but it is also the best when it's the best. Um, so, so yeah, looking back, I kind of enjoy all of these ups and downs being in it. I hate it. <laughs> so it's, uh, Time yeah. is making better Exactly. <laughs> Stine, when, a, when a difficult days were coming, after a lost final, after a defeat, after... And you can have also a bad day, of course, this is a part of the human being. How could you work it out from yourself? How did you came out from the, from the buttons? Because sometimes we are not always on the top. And sometimes we visit the bottom also. How do you pull yourself up? What is what makes you more comfortable, more better? How, what are your practices? Uh, if I'm going to be completely honest, like right away after these losses and the days after, I'm, I'm quite self-destructive. Like I, uh, I put a lot of responsibility on myself. I blame myself a lot. I struggle to sleep. Like it's for me, it's very, it's very overwhelming in those moments. But also, I think that from from that, it comes from knowing that it is important to me and to us. And uh, and also knowing that you're you're very often the most disappointed when you are when you're not satisfied with your team's performance, your own performance. So when you actually know that if you had only done this or that, you could have had a chance. So it comes from a point where you you know what you are able to do. You just didn't manage to get it out right there, and because someone else were actually better. Um, and I think there comes the whole development part. And I think for my whole career to focus on 
to focus on like the small things to like keep trying to improve that was actually where my my main motivation also came from um so yeah we <laughs> we live as long as we learn that's uh, what they say very cliche but i but i i think it's also very important to kind of acknowledge these things and and to um, yeah to keep creating processes that also when you also when you lose when you win and when you lose please clarify me something 2018 eva kish is saving the ball in the champions league final and we won it dear won it and then you are one of the first who is hugging eva with amazing smile how do you remember for this case oh <laughs> uh, yeah how do i remember that no but it was uh it was just it had been such a close game like every final four it's it's the it's the best level you you can reach uh in in handball um and then to to actually have this type of game going to to overtime uh like making some mistakes and then she managed to have this this last save and just like now it's ours what a feeling <laughs> <laughs> and of course it was a bit help for you because it was really difficult seconds before the end and mm. you were so happy mm. that she had for you yes for sure for sure she was a <laughs> saving angel at that point as handball player as stars uh, you are idol and of course a bit your na uh, days are like open book because of the lot of travelings and if not yours then the clubs or the national team social media is bringing infos but how much privacy is important for you and what do you do in your private time which is filling you up mm. um yeah for me it's 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 very important and like i said to to kind of keep uh, saying and to to stay who i want to be for me it was it was easier to just do it like that i might have been just as happy if i didn't but it was just a decision that i chose to to kind of yeah have some kind of distance i think it's i think it's healthy somehow at least it was for me um in my private life yeah i I uh, I really enjoy these uh, these simple everyday life thing things. I, I love to read, I love to go for a good cup of coffee, I love to watch a good movie. I love to hang out with uh, with friends, so I'm very I'm very normal. <laughs> Uh, this is my next question that uh, I often see during the travels that you don't open the tablet then you open a book on the plane or on the bus um the reading is something that makes your brain a bit closed and then you can relax Yeah it it does I I enjoy so much to to kind of put my yeah put my brain off without it being completely off somehow I think that after many years when I stopped uh, studying um i was watching so much uh, so many shows like so many movies i still enjoy that but i i i think it's it's good for me to to kind of um yeah to use my brain a little more actively as well it's not that everything i read is very smart and <laughs> that's very i read like a very wide range of books um but i i relax very well with it and i and yeah i i like to to be a little switched on as well This is a bit special season. Before the season we heard a lot of news about your future, about your career and of course somebody say as in a view to finish your career. Somebody said that oh, we don't know it for sure. So uh, there has been an interview that after the World Championship we will say something and uh, we are here right now after the World Championship. Uh, just a yes or no. <laughs> is it clearly known what you will do after the end of the season? It is quite clear. <laughs> Still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but I I know that I will not sign a contract for uh, yeah, I will not prolong with uh, with Gjord and that's not because I'm going anywhere else. This would be my first question. Yes. Uh so I am taking a break. Um it's most likely uh also a complete stop of my career. Um I like to kind of keep it open a little. I've seen many players that that have a break and actually miss it so much that they choose to come back and find a way uh to do that. Um but as it looks right now it still still feels very right for me to to kind of put put a final end on it uh here in this club but also in my professional career. Why do you make this decision? I know that it's uh tough 7 years but and sometimes it's tiring and, and sometimes even you smile you can be also really much tired a lot of games you play a lot of games are you a bit tired or what is the reason you have yeah i am a bit tired i think that some of my i still have a few goals from this last season that i 
that I really look forward to, that I really work for. So it's not that I have this lack of motivation for, for a few things that are still left. But I also feel that I am kind of full of things. And I was, over these last years, I was lucky enough to play everything all the time. I, I was very little injured, which has been such a privilege, like mix of me being in good shape and taking care, but also probably a lot of luck as well. Uh, but that also made it kind of a... It, I have been doing a lot <laughs> and I never had I never had a break and I never could kind of breathe for real, I feel. Um, I wouldn't have wanted it in any other way. So I'm not saying it in, in the way that I complain at all because it was absolutely ideal. I couldn't have wanted it to be better. Um, but at some point, it's also something about being, okay, now I, I need something to, to change. And, I, and I, also, I also want to be closer to my, to my boyfriend, uh, to have more time with him, with my family, with my friends. Um, it's my 11th season uh, abroad. Um, so it's, it's, been, it's been such a ride, such an amazing ride. Um, but yeah, I feel, I feel full and very satisfied in that way. As a professional handball player, it will be something finished at the summer uh, when the Olympics is over. Let's say now it's clearly out, as you told. Are you afraid about being just Stina Oftedal, the human being, the lady or the wife or uh, what will come after handball? Um, yeah, in, in one way, a little not so much maybe more about my own my own feeling about myself i uh, it is something about to to feel that you're good in something that you are appreciated in a certain way and and yeah and that will somehow also go away right away when i when i stop um but i also luckily i <laughs> i like the human that i am as well I hope and think that this type of life will actually give me so many things too. And I'm also in many ways quite excited to not, not needing to be as selfish as an athlete needs to be. Um, I'm very, yeah, I'm, I'm also very excited to put that kind of pressure away in one way, but also just as much this, okay, it, it, I don't have to do exactly this just because I need to be ready for that. It would be a little nice to, to kind of yeah, take that off somehow.